hardly see them. They don't walk, they run. But I got plenty left, I've set my sight on. Don't wait up, leave the light on. I'll be home soon. I've been left for dead before, but I still fight on. Don't wait up, leave the light on. I'll be home soon. Good evening, I'm Jim Olson from Signature Sounds, back here at the Parlor Room in Northampton for another in our Thursday night series of Signature Sounds 25th anniversary concerts. Another winter evening as we uh, amazingly approach the one year anniversary of the loss of live music in this room. It's been so nice to do these shows as a way to just keep music alive here in the Parlor Room and tonight uh, we have a Signature Sounds favorite, a man who has played in this room many, many times, Mark Arelli. Good evening and welcome back. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, how are you doing? How, how, how are things going in your world? I mean, I think we can just leave it at okay. Okay plus a puppy. <laughs> so pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah you're, you're doing the, the family thing, the dad thing, the... Yeah remote school thing, which is its yep. own challenge. Oh yeah, everyone's remote in our house. My wife's working from home too. We had to move four or five rooms of our house around, you know, who was stationed where, just so everyone could have a, a little bit of a space of their own. <laughs> and on top of that, you got a dog. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he's free to go wherever, <laughs> and he does. <laughs> What's the, your dog's name? Uh, it's Leo. You know, he's a little rescue uh, kind of lab mix, and uh -huh. uh, he's, he's perfect. Nice. Pretty much, yeah. That's great. Well, you know, he, he'll love this, but then when everybody goes back to their regular lives, he'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say to, you have to prepare the dog for that, but I'm trying to prepare my family for that. You know, like, at some point, I'm going to go back to work, and then someone else is going to have to take him out in the freezing cold rain to do his business, you know? <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So true. Well, yep. you have been busy making and releasing music, which is yeah. wonderful. You uh, put out a great album just about a year ago, right? Yeah, a year ago on March 27th. Great timing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the album Blindsided, which is a wonderful record. Thank you. Working with your pal Zach Hickman. Yeah, and uh, a bunch of new guys down in Nashville, uh, guys that I'd kind of found in my travels throughout uh, the, the past four or five years that I'd really connected with, whether we met at festivals or opening up for their band or what have you. And I just started to think about working with a new crew uh, with Zach at the helm and, and just kind of shake it up with the rest of the band. And I started thinking about all these guys and I called them all up, and it turns out they all live in Nashville. <laughs> so we flew down there and, and made a record I'm very proud of. Nice. A and an EP as well, which is yeah. from the same sessions, right? The EP was I actually made on my basement. That was, oh, that nice. was okay. relatively easy, yeah. Um, and that, that happened a little bit later, but um, yeah. That just came out just this month or so, right? Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about the other EP. There's a lot of music. Yeah, you, There is I, a lot of music. I, I was talking about the acoustic uh, selections of, from Blindsided EP, and that I made in my basement. Jackpot, yes, was made partly during the studio sessions and partly during another session for, for different tracks. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of there's been a lot of stuff, you know. I, I think if uh, if it had been my I had my druthers, I might have just said like, "Can I just go away for a couple of years and let people miss me?" But fortunately, I have people in my life that advise me against that, and they're like, "No, you have to you have to be an artist. You're an artist. You have to do the thing." And so so I did the thing, and I'm I'm glad they made me. And you have done the thing for quite a while now, and I I was trying to actually get an accurate count of the albums. Well, yeah, it depends on how you count, right? Yeah. So there's the Blindsided is my technically my 12th solo record under my own name. Could be my 13th if you count the one I did before Signature Sounds. Um, and then there's one with Jeffrey Foucault, uh, Seven Curses. And then there's two with Barnstar, soon to be a third. Um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot. I, I, don't, I don't even bother counting anymore, but I think that's the math. Do you, do you forget? Do you forget, like... Oh, Forget that album. Yeah, I just did. I forgot <laughs> about a whole EP that just came out a couple right. weeks ago. There you go, that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I just, I'm not actually a very backward looking 
I, I tend not to look backwards very, very often. Um, that's not my, that's not my tendency. And um, this time has been a, a little interesting in that regard because it, you have more space to kind of consider. I mean, the future is so unknown, and you, the present looks exactly the same every day. So you just find yourself, at least I do, naturally thinking about the past. And uh, so I've had a chance to kind of reappraise some of my work and the anniversaries of things that happened, you know, decades ago that I, I probably would have just let go right by if I was if I was working and looking forward. You've always been a busy guy, and and uh, one of the amazing things you've always been such a great singer songwriter, but you've also developed a whole second career as a sideman. Yeah, that was um, that really kind of I think that kind of saved me in a way. I think. Um, I'm not sure if I would have kept at the solo thing uh, as long as I have if I didn't have that other outlet, you know, yeah. because I, with having different, different paths to take, I can go wherever the energy is. If for some reason the solo thing is not feeling, I'm not excited about it or the energy is kind of petered out and I have to make a new record, but I'm not quite there yet, I can just pivot to the sideman thing or pivot to the bluegrass thing. And I'm instantly re-energized, and I learn from you know the best artists in the business. I'm you know six feet from Laurie McKenna or Josh Ritter or Mark Cohen, and I can see what they're doing, and like I'm I'm inspired as I'm performing with them. <laughs> and then I go home, and I you know and I, and stuff starts to happen. So it's it all it, it all informs um, everything informs everything basically, and I and I no longer am at the point where I can distinguish between, you know, the solo versus sideman. I just, I show up someplace and I'm making music and I'm happy. Which is wonderful. You yeah. Know, that, that's, that it's so fulfilling on both levels. Well, um, tonight you're going to do a, a sort of mix of songs from throughout your career, but we do have an anniversary album. Yeah. Yeah. Golden Age. That's a, that was, it's really amazing to hear all those songs in kind of one place and to see you know, over two decades worth of, of artists and, and a shifting kind of, uh, I won't say shifting philosophy because you've been very, very consistent, but just kind of shifting even musical tastes over the years kind of all hang together really well. Well, and it was so, it, the difficult part about it was, you know, there's 37 artists on the compilation, which actually doesn't include everybody, right? unfortunately. Mm. Um, we could have made a triple, I suppose, but yeah. um, it's also, boiling down to one song per artist. Like, and you were one of those ones that was really <laughs> tricky. Like, okay, we've got one Marcarelli song. Yeah, I how, know. How do you do that? I yeah. know. I, I don't make it easy. I, I tend to jump around. Uh, I mean, to me, it all feels like me. But, uh, you know, from the outside looking in or listening in, it could sound like, oh, that's his lullaby thing, or that's his political stuff, or that's his Western swing, you know. So there's, depending on where you catch me, you, you might get a different picture. But I'm glad you went with the one you went with, because that, you know, that's closer to kind of who I am now. Yeah, it seemed like kind of a, a straight down the middle Marcarelli yeah. song. It also, it also, we shared something that I don't even know if you realize we shared. We both spent a short time in... Portland, Maine, oh. living on Munjoy Hill, which which you no name way. check in that song. So. I didn't know that. How did I? Know? How have we not talked about this before? <laughs> it was great. a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, er, er, early in my my career, as as it were. So. Yeah, I threw that in there. You know, just as one of those kinds of, you need details in songs, and it's it's just easier to use real life stuff than it is to make something up. And I thought, like, you know, well, when I do my one Portland show a year, somebody will, you know, woo, when I say Munjoy <laughs> Hill, you know, but every once in a while, someone will go, woo, you know, like far away from me, and I'm like, yeah, really? But then they'll come up and say, yeah, I, I grew up there, or, you know, it's wild. Well, I love that song. How about starting that, starting off with this? Let's tonight? do it. Let, let's do it. Here's Marcarelli live from the parlor room. Thank God it's quitting time Can't take no more this weekday grind But I ain't ready to head back home and watch TV Guess I'll drive down to the pier Let the sun go down on a six pack of beer Stare out through my windshield at the sea 
It's a gritty seacoast town where the water pounds the sand. I don't know why I'm so surprised. Things didn't work out like I planned. If I was a wave out on the ocean, if I was a wave out on the sea, free to go whichever way the wind was blowing, maybe wash up on some farther shore where these blues can't follow me. Got a small apartment on Montjoy Hill. Didn't want too much space to fill. It's just a bed, a pull-out couch, and a kitchenette. Weekends, my kid ain't sleeping over. Well, there's just no point in trying to stay sober. Cause there ain't no good example that I need to set. It's a gritty seacoast town Where the winter never ends Twice a day the tide goes out Heaven knows why it never rolls back in If I was a wave out on the ocean If I was a wave out on the sea Free to go whichever way the wind was blowing Maybe wash up on some farther shore where these blues can't follow me Yeah, yeah destiny or just my mind playing tricks on me it keeps me wanting something that's always just out of my reach but I bet there's somebody somewhere else who somehow managed to convince himself that he'd be happier if he washed up on this beach It's a gritty seacoast town Five beer moon shining down on me I'll save the last one till I get back home God, I hope there ain't no reruns on TV If I was a wave out on the ocean If I was a wave out on the sea Free to go whichever way the wind was blowing Maybe wash up on some farther shore follow me they can't follow me all right thank you so much one from uh the, the new compilation and also my 2008 record delivered there. And uh, here's one from the brand new uh, EP called uh, Nothing But a Liar. It goes like this. <laughs> stars but I only got burned and came crashing back to earth my heart ain't nothing but a liar look up and be a man go ask her to dance but sometimes you got to gamble on desire but she walks right out the door Took all I had and more My heart ain't nothing but a lie You got to follow, they say But it leads me astray 
And sometimes it's got a mind of its own It ain't no northern star or a lighthouse in the dark My heart ain't nothing but a lie You can't have no rules without the bride And my heart ain't nothing but a lie Oh, thank you so much. I can hear you from through, through the screens. I, can, I truly can. I can feel it. Um, I'm going to do... Uh, do the title track from this uh, this jackpot EP. It's an EP of love songs. There's just three of them, actually. And um, and this is a this is a true story. Kind of song from uh, from the perspective of a of a guy who can't can't really believe his luck. And uh, I certainly know what that feels like. It's uh, called jackpot. Pennies fall out of my pocket For it's man, I'll never be mistaked I seldom have a dollar in my wallet The one that I forgot on our first date So many women would have just kept walking you stuck around and even said I do I ain't a gambling man I don't believe in games of chance but I must have hit the jackpot with you I must have hit the jackpot my ship must have come in nice guys don't always finish last and the house don't always win what else can make each day feel so just like three cherries in a row? I must have hit the jackpot with you. Everything that makes a life worth living A little slice of heaven here on earth You're my lover and the mother of my children You're so much more than I know I deserve You'll never catch me tossing pennies in a fountain Cause my every wish has already come true So I'm folding all my bets Quitting while I'm still ahead I must have hit the jackpot with you I must have hit the jackpot My ship must have come in Nice guys don't always finish last And the house don't always win what else can make each day feel so just like three cherries in a row? I must have hit the jackpot with you. I must have hit the jackpot with you. <laughs> All right, jackpot. 
true story. Not, uh, not too proud of some of those things in there, but <laughs> I did forget my wallet. And it's usually empty anyway, so it doesn't usually matter. But uh, <laughs> um, we were talking earlier, Jim and I, about uh, kind of history and where, where we, you come from and things that I've done. And, uh, and uh, after all that, talking about how I'm not really one to normally look back, I did realize that uh, this month marks the... Uh, the 20th anniversary of, of the second record that I put out on, on Signature Sounds, a record called Compass and Companion. And um, it's, uh, I'm really proud of that record, but it's kind of from that time in my life. My first record, I, I, I had just met the woman that would become my wife. And so there were songs in that first record that were kind of like pre-her <laughs> and a lot of heartbreak songs, you know? And then I still had a few heartbreak songs left over after the first record, so I put them on the second record as well. But then I'd also started writing songs for Polly, uh, who would go on to become my wife. And so that, that Compass and Companion record is kind of half, half and half. And uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of, of how that is here with these next couple songs. This is, uh, this is the one that starts off the record. And... Uh, and this would have been one of the leftover ones. It's called Ghost. I'm not the kind to believe in superstition, but lately the truth I have seen it's stranger than non-fiction you raise Through my blood some kind of sweet addiction Heaven help the fool who falls in love I sleepwalk the streets of this town Looking for your face And I ain't got nothing to show right now but I can't give up the chase Won't you show me a sign Some kind of saving grace You're the only one I'm dreaming of I can't get you off my mind I must be going insane Cause all these streets look the same And nobody answers when I call out your name And I, I need you the most When you're not around I'm in love with your ghost And you're invisible now And I know that it's wrong To keep holding on to something Yes, you can already see that my heart is haunted Cause you are everything I need and everything I've ever wanted I lost myself somewhere between Can't you hear me calling? I wish I may, I wish I might For a star I chance to see tonight I wish I could disappear right now Fade in this faceless crowd Cause I'm so sick and tired Of missing you out there tonight I need you the most When you're not around I'm in love with your ghost And you're invisible now and I know, I know it's wrong To keep holding on To something That you can't even see To something That you 
can't even see I'm not the kind to be That'll keep going forever if I let it go. <laughs> All right. So that's the first song on Compass and Companion, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that track came out really wonderful. Uh, as did the, the next track, which is kind of an example of uh, the, the love song part of uh, Compass and Companion. And this is the title track. And uh, I was so fortunate to, uh, to get Kelly Willis, the wonderful Kelly Willis, uh, great, great singer uh, and uh, songwriter and artist uh, from down in Austin, Texas to uh, sing the duet with me on this. And uh, I've only met Kelly in person once uh, years and years and years ago. Uh, she sang on the song remotely, you know, this, we sent her the tapes and she sent them back and it was amazing and it all works, works together great. But I, I only met her once and, uh, and she said she remembered singing on the song, it was amazing. And so now we're Twitter buddies. And in this time, I, I was like, we have, to, we have to do this live once in our lives someday. So uh, when this whole thing is over, I'll, I maybe I'll fly down to Austin and get Kelly Willis to sing this song live with me. Um, until then, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do it myself. I've sung it as a duet with so many amazing um, female songwriters. And, uh, and it didn't start out as a duet. It started out as just a song for me. Um, and I think it was this, the, the last track on the Steve Earle uh, I Feel All Right record um, called uh, You're Still Standing There that uh, is a duet with Lucinda Williams. And I heard that on the river here in Northampton one day, and I was like, I want a song like that, <laughs> a pretty great duet, you know? So I, I turned it into a duet. And uh, so what I'm saying is I used to know the second verse. Many other wonderful people have sung the second verse uh, in, in the years since, and I will attempt to remember it once again here. This is uh, Compass and Companion. Out here on this road just after midnight Silver sickle rising in the east I'm steady on the wheel But I know just how you feel So just lean back and try to catch some sleep Go to sleep There's just a fingernail moon up above A cold to sleep, my darling Am I the one that you'll be dreaming of? To think of every back road we have traveled of all the restless miles that we have run If you chance to find a trace Of a smile on my face I'm just dreaming of all the miles we've still to come So go to sleep, my darling just a fingernail moon up above Go to sleep, my darling Am I the one that you'll be dreaming of?
friends and companion Oh, you follow me down every road I ride Wherever I may roam I'm already home As long as you are traveling by my side So go, go to sleep, my darling There's just a fingernail moon up above Go, go to sleep, my darling Am I the one you'll be dreaming of? Mark still Arelli. in there. They're still in there. <laughs> in the Wayback Machine there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember, Mark, what a huge deal that was that Kelly Willis was going to sing on your record. I don't think either one of us could believe it. We were both big fans. No, no, man. I, I mean, I, I've never told her this, and I hope she's not watching this now, but I was, a, I was a fan in high school. I used to see her videos come on the Nashville Network, and I, I loved the songs, and, and she just was a great singer, and I had been a fan for, for so long, even by 2001. I just I could not believe that someone like from my TV, was singing my words, you know, on, on my record. It just blew my mind. And you guys sounded so great together. It yeah, really worked. It, yeah, we, you know, Lauren Entras, who mm. produced the record, knew where to, um, where to pitch things so that it would work for both of us. I'm not sure I would sing that song in that key if it was just myself, even though I just sang it in the original key. It, it feels a little low for me, but with her in the mix, it, you know, the, the sum of the parts kind of makes it, makes it work. Well, Compass and Companion was actually your second signature album, second yeah. of eight, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. Eight? Um, let's talk a little bit about how we came together, because uh, I, I was saying earlier, it's a little foggy to me, because that's right about the same time I had my children, my twins, yeah. and was not sleeping. And, but uh, <laughs> I believe it was Mark Thayer and connected with you first, right? I think it was Bob Dylan. No, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was Mark Thayer. Um, although we met, I met Mark Thayer and you at the Northeast Regional Folk Alliance one year. And I guess that would have been in 97. And I, as I remember, um, a, a mutual friend, a production manager, Chris Bergbaum, he used to live out here. I don't know if Chris is still here she or not. She still does, I believe. Okay. As I remember, she dragged me into the room uh, where you guys were having a showcase uh, and said, Mark's going to play a song now. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of like an open mic kind of jam thing, but I would have never walked in that room, <laughs> even though I wanted to walk in that room so badly. And uh, I remember she pulled me in there, and I remember it was like David Hamburger and Jim Henry and um, a couple other people were kind of like a little kind of acoustic house band. And I played a song of mine called River Road, which is like a five plus minute song to begin with. And it, I was having so much fun. <laughs> it was sounding so good that I didn't want it to end that I, I segued into uh, Bruce Springsteen's One Step Up, Two Steps Back. I remember this now. Right? Thank you for the memory yeah, jogger right? there, Mark. So, you That's... know, after like 10 minutes of me monopolizing the jam, I... I walked out of the room and as I remember Mark followed me and he said I have a studio you should come and I went down to the studio and recorded some songs um, just kind of some demos and uh, and then he passed those on to you and, and, and it, everything else is history well Mark you know is such kind of famously reserved guy yeah he got so excited about you and your music yeah. We used to refer to you as the kid. You were the kid yeah. at the time. I, you know, it's crazy as I still feel like the kid, although I'm decidedly not anymore. And no one, um, 
you know, John, I heard John Prine say something about this um, before he passed, that he still, he still felt like a kid, like a, and, and in a lot of ways. And I really, I really kind of, kind of uh, identified with that because I still feel like the, the, the kid at the party that's just happy to, to be invited and, or he thinks he was invited and he showed up and he's here now. And, uh, and yet, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be 47 in a couple, three months. And, uh, I'm, I'm as shocked as anyone. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I always found amazing about you right from the get-go is as a young guy, you had this reverence for the sort of folk generation that came before you. Uh, I yeah. think of Bill Morrissey and Greg yeah. Brown and Chris Smither and, and folks who were a little older than you, which was sort of unusual for a guy who was basically college age or maybe a little bit post-college age at that point. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think that kind of comes directly from my blues phase, which was in high school. Like, I went through a couple of years where I listened to nothing but blues music. And blues is a, is a very historically uh, or roots-minded genre where... Um, you know, credit is it tends to be given. You know, and everyone's kind of building on, on um, the, the kind of limited number of progenitors. And uh, so I would, you know, I found the blues through like the Grateful Dead and the Almond Brothers and people like that. And then, you know, you hear Stormy Monday. Well, who wrote that? You know, and you go back, um, and then you you know find that the the real pioneers of of blues. So I was accustomed to digging. To kind of digging back and to th and to thinking about like well who who did this before and how can I build how did other people build on that how might I be able to add in some small way mm -hmm. and if you you know those the there were plenty of women artists too Patty Larkin is one that comes to mind um, but you know those guys Smither and Greg Brown and Bill Morrissey of course they they're all very heavily influenced by the blues and and it was Smither that really caught me first because I loved the blues. And I loved, um, which tends to be more groove and um, and instrumental kind of feel, and instrumental virtuosity and, and stuff. It's it's not it's not so much about the lyrics, though. There's some real great lyrics. Um, and then I also love the Bob Dylans and the Jackson Browns and the, and the uh, James Taylors and that kind of literate singer songwriter thing. And Smither was the first guy that showed me that you could put that stuff together, and you didn't necessarily need a band to do it. And so once I found him, I kind of jumped off into the Northeast kind of folk scene, and, and I was I was gone. I, lo I loved all those artists. And and you dove do. into it deep, you know. Yes, yeah. it's, it's pretty awesome. You spent some time here in the Pioneer Valley. Yes, yes. You know, around the time of your first couple albums, and then you were finishing up at UMass, right? And yeah, I was getting a graduate degree, a, mas a master's degree in evolutionary biology. It's a it's a very Americana kind of thing to do, you know. <laughs> and uh, I just remember I was going to move here after college be for music. I, and I didn't want to go back to Boston where I'm from because it felt too big. And I said, I'm, I heard about the Northampton scene. I was like, I'm going to move to Northampton. And my advisor at the time said, you're going to need something to do. You know, you can, what, are you going to work in a coffee shop? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said, you should go to you graduate school, get your degree, you know, and uh, so I did. And I think everyone was kind of secretly hoping that I would kind of come to my senses and, and realize that, you know, I could do science and, and be gainfully employed. And uh, that was not the case. Uh, they tried very hard to get me to stay. Actually, they tried once to get me to stay. They sat me down and they kind of laid it out for me. Like, this could this could be your path. And I was like... But I'll always regret not knowing. You know, I have to know. And I st kind of still need to know. <laughs> 20-something 20, 20 years later, I still need to know, like, where this thing is going. And I, and I still, in some ways, don't know. And I, I find that very kind of uh, alluring and, uh, and very inspiring. As it should be. Yeah, right? I mean, well, one of the things I, I loved about the early days when you lived here was you had this little group called The Kitchen Table. And you played at the Fire and Water Cafe. Yeah, which... every Tuesday night. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, the now defunct Fire and Water Cafe. That was a the Fire and Water was a very very seminal, um, very small venue uh, um, run by Star and Trist Drucker here in downtown Northampton. Very nurturing and supportive of the of the arts. I saw so many people in that room that went on to really big things. I remember seeing uh, an early version of Soul Live in that room with Eric Krasnow on guitar. Wow. I mean. 
I think they were playing like the 7 p.m. set before us one night, you know? I mean, it's just so much great music. And they gave us um, Tuesday nights for like a little busman's holiday. All these singer-songwriters and, and sidemen, Jim Henry, Pete Nelson, uh, Paul Kahansky, Bruce McKay, um, Doug Plavin on the drums, and, uh, and me. And I was, again, the kid by many years. And uh, we just would play our own songs, we would play cover songs, and I w was literally learning how to play music with others, like, in real time. It was fantastic. On-the-job training. Yeah. And absolutely. afterwards, they'd pass the truck. Remember yeah. that? They had the Tonka truck. They yeah, the, the dump truck. <laughs> Thank God it was one of the large-sized ones and not, like, one of the matchbox-sized trucks. That would, wouldn't have been good. Well, you've always been a great collaborator, both, you know, in your own work and as a, a sideman and... One of uh, the most amazing music moments for me the last few years, you wrote and recorded a really powerful song called By Degrees um, in 2018, I want to say. Yep, yep. Um, I put maybe it Maybe after Parkland? Uh, yeah, it, I wrote it after the Roseburg, Oregon Community College shooting, um, mm. which is not one that sticks out maybe like the Parkland um, or Newtown or any of the other kind of more infamous ones. But the Roseburg Community College shooting was the first one that I went and followed the hashtags on Twitter and saw things from across, comments from across the political spectrum. And I was shocked at what some people were saying uh, and the callousness and um, the idea that you know we needed to double down on the on the guns and um, presumably the violence, you know that, um, and it just felt like there were people that wanted more and more violence, and that every time this happened, we were getting more and more numb to it, and that was a very frightening prospect to feel like this is just normal now, you know, like how can we can't have this be the new normal. And so by degrees, I remember it fell out very quickly. I was on an airplane. I didn't have a guitar. I was flying to North Carolina um, with Paula Cole. And uh, I wrote it on the airline, airplane. And I was opening the show that night. And I played it that night in North Carolina. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't remember it like getting a rousing standing you know, ovation or anything. But I've played that song, song everywhere uh, I go. You know, it's, it's, to me, it's... To me, it's not a political message. It's a, it's, it's a message of love, and it's a declaration of love and, um, and kind of anti-complacency, you know? Yeah, it's not specific to gun violence, although... It, no, no. That obviously was, was an inspiration for it, but... Yeah. Um, well, I, I, one of the, uh, the last times I saw live music in 2019 at the Americana Conference... Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> um, for one thing, when Mark recorded the song, he had an amazing... Uh, bunch of duet partners for it, including Laurie McKenna and Anais Mitchell, Josh Ritter, uh, Cheryl Crow. And Roseanne Cash. And Roseanne Cash. The first one to sign on was Roseanne, yeah. And uh, Mark was nominated for Song of the Year at the Americana Music Awards. And uh, I got to be in the room at the amazing Ryman Auditorium mm -hmm. and see you up on stage singing that song with your guests. And it was uh, just an incredible incredibly powerful moment. Yeah, thank you. It was, that was, um, that was a pinch me kind of moment. I, I had, fortunately I had been on that stage twice before, um, once with, with Lori uh, McKenna to play the Grand Ole Opry and, and once playing in, in Josh Ritter's band. So I kinda, I kinda was prepared for the, the, the kind of just historical kind of sense of being, feeling overwhelmed by the history. Um, but then to go back out on that stage, and you know the award nomination well, well, that was amazing. Um, but to go back out on that stage and sing it with a house band that included you know guys like Don Was and Buddy Miller, you know musical heroes of mine, and then to be flanked by Lori and Josh, uh, I'm going to lose it here a little bit, who I had supported on that very stage, you know. It didn't even matter that I didn't win. It, you know, John Prine won. That's you won. fine. <laughs> I you mean, won. You, you, you can't you can't lose to John Prine. No. You know, it's it's uh, everyone wins when they're in the same category as John Prine. And Lori was up for the same award for a song of her own. Um, but just to stand on that stage and to be kind of supported by 
longtime friends, people that I'd known for over 20 years from like my open mic days, people that I had lost song, song contests with, <laughs> you know, to stand up there with them uh, and all those other wonderful artists that, you know, I'll, I'll never, if I never see that happen again, I at least got to have it once, you know, it was amazing. That's awesome. Well, Mark, I'm so glad you're joining us this evening, and, and uh, thank you for all your great music you've made for Signature Sounds over the years. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, man. This, this, this label means a lot to me. This was when I moved out to the Valley and um, kind of got the lay of the land. Um, Salamander Crossing was really big at the time, uh, and I, was, I had a huge crush on Ronnie Harbo, mm -hmm. and all I wanted to do was, like, my, the extent of my dreams was to be on the same label as Salamander Crossing. <laughs> I had no, no agenda beyond that. I just thought, like, could, could that ever possibly happen? And then when it did, you know, I never, I never dreamed that it would, I'd go on and make, you know, eight records with you guys of all different kinds of music. There's so many record labels that would have just, you know, shut it down after one or two, or every time I wanted to try something new, they would have been like, ah, I think you should stick to this kind of thing. But you always uh, su supported and, you know, kind of gave me enough, enough rope to kind of run with. And uh, I just, I can't, I can't thank you enough. Well, I feel like we, we, we kind of learned together. Yeah. You, know, you as an artist, we as a label, it, 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 you know, you were kind enough to also be patient with us as we learned what we were doing. So. Yeah, so much change in the business during that time, too. You know, I mean, um, every record that we put out, and, and kind of it's still largely this way, every record you put out, it's like, well, how do we do this now? You know, two years ago we did it this way. Some of those things don't even apply anymore. And that was happening very quickly with the disruption of, um, of recorded music by the, you know, com, you know, downloads and Napster and all that stuff. And somehow, through it all, we kept putting out art, you know, and it, some of it sold better than others, but 25 years later, here, here, here we, we are. are. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, let's hear some more music. Let's Mark Arelli here oh. at the Parlor Room. She was the parson's only daughter And a poor sharecropper's dream Voice as sweet as falling water From the cool, clear mountain stream We came to share a love forbidden A union cursed by family be forever unforgiven when we swore eternity. We set old heart on twenty acres, plowed the fields and worked the land, but when the fever came to take her with its unforgiving hand I tried to soothe her shaking body but no peace could I provide she said I hear the angels singing softly I'm bound to cross that great divide take my Says to the river where the water's cold and deep. Take my ashes to the river where the Lord my soul will keep. One mournful morning in late November, faithful to her last desire, I burned her body down to embers, scooped the ashes from the fire down by the banks 
of the Black Stone River for to drown her memory and as her spirit I deliver I heard her calling out to me take my ashes to the river where the water's cold and deep take my ashes something completely different. My little sister makes more than you. My little sister makes more than you. Would you believe she's just 22? My little sister makes more than you. More than you at 22. My little sister, you know she's gonna be a millionaire. You know she's gonna be a millionaire. I pay my rent with a gig and a prayer. You know she's gonna be a millionaire. Millionaire, millionaire, my little sister. She called me up out of the blue. Said, Big Brother, have you heard the news? You know they hired me straight out of school. I'm gonna move away from home, get a place of my own. Buy a new set of wheels just to see how it feels. Fancy food, expensive wine, they vacation our company time. This song in uh, the late 90s. It was a different economy back then, to say the very least. It was the dot com era, the start of the dot com boom. And I left college to become a uh, former ev evolutionary biologist folk singer. And uh, all my friends were going off and signing up with companies that would go on to be LinkedIn and Google and all these crazy lucrative internet jobs and my sister she uh she was a headhunter i didn't even know that was an actual job but it meant something else but she she told me what she was making one day and i could not believe it she was worth every penny of course i didn't mean to suggest that but uh, i thought well i'm gonna get a song out of this <laughs> My little sister makes more than you. My little sister makes more than you. What is this crazy world coming to? My little sister makes more than you. More than you and you and you and you and you, my little sister. Oh, 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 my little 
sister makes more than you. My little sister makes more than you. My little sister makes more than you. My little sister makes more than you. More than you. More than you. My little sister. Little sister. sister it's been a long time for that one we retired that one many years ago every once in a while if someone really begs I will, I will play it but it's uh it's, it's of a time i guess well, this one here is um it's one of, one of the first kind of western swingy sort of songs i wrote and uh I would kind of write these these sort of lighter country songs, uh, kind of in between the you know kind of more intense songs, and uh, eventually collected a whole album of them for uh, for signature in 2004 called Hillbilly Pilgrim, and uh, but this is this is where it all started, and um, on the on the Compass and Companion record we had the uh, the great the truly great tandem guitar team of Duke Levine and Kevin Barry, uh, two, two world-class guitarists uh, that just happen to live in Boston. I, I don't want to call them Boston guitarists because they are two of the best players in the world. And uh, unfortunately, neither of them are here. And, uh, <laughs> and I wanted to do this song, and uh, so I, I decided, okay, I'm gonna learn, learn some of the solo and play it myself. So this is this is without a net, folks. I, I have practiced this a, a lot more than I want to admit, and uh, and I, I still have no idea if it's going to work. So we'll uh, we'll try it here. It's called "Why Should I Cry." A one, two, three. See, it, it didn't work already. One, two, three. taught me everything I know about being lonesome and I learned my lesson oh so faithfully what was I thinking of when I gave you my love for I knew you would go eventually I can't say you never gave me nothing after all you left me with the blue But at least it's something Well, I don't believe I will ever lose Tell me why should I cry over you, sweet darling Why should I cry over you? Give me one good reason I should be blue Why should I cry over you? Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> All right. That went so much better than I thought it was going to go. I'm going to give myself a round of applause. <laughs> oh, I really did. Uh, I really did think uh, of calling Duke Levine up and seeing if he would come out and uh, and do it with me. But I was like, no, you got to man up and uh, and try and make it happen. And I'm gl glad it did. All right. Oh, I'm so much more relieved now. Now, <laughs> now I'll probably screw everything else up. But uh, here's one more from. Uh, from the Compass and Companion record. This is a, a favorite of mine. Um, and uh, it's a song, I think, if I'm probably honest with its origins, it probably came about after hanging out um, with uh, Cliff Eberhardt uh, many a late night back when I used to live here in the valley where he still lives. And it's called My Love. <laughs> Shadows fill your eyes. Your smile is but a thinly veiled disguise. Could it be you've grown dissatisfied with me? My love, I know a heart's not black and white But I can tell when something isn't right Could it be you've lost your appetite For me I've heard that love can slip away Without a warning Just like the way you made up your mind But everything looks different in the morning So darling, think it over one more time My love and my sky would turn from gray to blue If I could only change your point of view Can't you see what losing you would do To me a bunch of songs from Compass and Companion there and uh, like we were talking about before there's been 
There's been many records and many different kinds of music since, and uh, I'd like to finish up with a couple more recent songs, including one from the, the Blindsided record that came out last year. And uh, this song kind of hints at, a, at, the, uh, at the kind of struggle for uh, kind of racial justice and uh, the danger of, of nostalgia and, and kind of who that leaves, the kinds of people that nostalgia typically leaves out, especially in country music. And um, I'd like to uh, like to send this song out to uh, to my niece who is here, and, one, and we have a small studio audience of two, <laughs> my niece and my sister-in-law. And my niece Tess uh, is doing some really great uh, racial uh, justice work uh, and inclusivity work in uh, in her hometown here in the valley. And uh, I think that's how things are going to uh, you know start to start to move move the needle on this. Uh, on this thing here. But this is a song called uh, Rose Colored Rear View. There was a time when we all watched the same screen. Springsteen was mainstream. Everybody had a hungry heart There was a time We weren't rich but you could make a living A 40 hour weekend, a two day weekend Could get you pretty far Was there a time Or was it only in my mind When everything seemed simpler And we all sat down dinner every night or am I only looking through this rose colored rear view there was a time this town felt like family I could ride my bike down any street and somebody always knew my name there was a time before the mills pulled out and the pills moved in when we didn't need no medicine just to take away the pain was there a time or was it only in my mind when everything seemed simpler and we all sat down for dinner every night oh, am I through this rose colored rear view face the flag are we blind lost in some nostalgia case only white men miss the good old days they ain't coming back was there a time or was it only in our minds when everything seems simpler And we all sat down for dinner And we all watched the same screen But we didn't see the same thing Cause maybe all this in the mirror Was never close as it appeared Like the way the truth can seem so black and white After all our looking through rose colored rear view oh thank you 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, folks, thanks for tuning in uh, tonight. And wherever you are, uh, wherever you are and, and whoever you are, I, I miss you and your town. Uh, this, is, this has been a challenging time for all of us. And uh, if, if anything, it has, it has reminded me to never complain about being on the road again. It's not all glamorous, but uh, it's a dream job, and I miss it dearly. And I would do anything um, and have been doing everything in my power to, uh, to kind of stop this thing, my small part, and, uh, and get, get us to the other side of this so we can, we can uh, congregate again. And, um, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. When, um, when an artist sings a song that gives voice to an emotion uh, or an experience that, that you and the audience have, have felt, you know, you feel seen. I've, I've had the same experience as an audience member. You feel seen. And when you f are witnessed in, in that way, you feel less alone. And uh, in that way, live music kind of is uniquely suited to, to provide this kind of secular communion um, that, that we really we really thrive on we really need as a, as a species we're wired that way and it's hard to it's been hard to kind of to go without it it seems like a frivolous kind of entertaining thing but it's it's as uh, it's as old as the proverbial stories we we tell ourselves around around the campfire uh, back in our caveman days and we'll get back to it uh, I know we will uh, and uh, I can't I can't wait for that but until then I do want to thank you for for all your support um, this past year and probably the rest of this year <laughs> before we can get back to normal. Um, thanks again to Signature Sounds, um, not just for tonight, but for everything for like 25 years. And to Georgia on the cameras and Jared on the sound, it's just so amazing to, to, to be loud and have reverb as opposed to in, in my living room <laughs> by myself. So uh, I'll leave you with this song here. Uh, Jim, Jim Olson and I were talking about it, and uh, this is called By Degrees. When I take a look around me, sometimes I wish I was blind. Feels like something sacred's dying. One headline at a time, and I can't tear myself away. No, I just stare in disbelief. You can learn to live with anything when it happens by degree. And I've seen every head bowed down as if lost in private prayer. I've seen the phones in every hand, seen the long and vacant stare of souls gone numb thumbing through each ceaseless changing feet you can learn to live with anything when it happens by degree and i've seen pundits shouting back and forth across some great divide against a map of red and blue Points of view so cut and dried But when you look into the mirror What color country do you see? Where well, you can learn to live with everything When it happens by degree And I've seen the flags at half staff as a nation mourned and moaned, I've seen the stars and bars of flying proud above the state house dome for the Charleston nine we sing. I once was blind, but now I see. We can learn to live with anything when it happens by degree. I've seen little hands on little shoulders, children in a line. I've seen them led away from school as the shots rang out inside. And I found something, how 
wants to change, but somehow it's become routine. We can learn to live with anything when it happens by degrees. I've seen sadness seep into my heart Each day a little more This darkness growing so familiar I can't recall what came before My children's faces filled with questions Looking up expectantly And I don't know what to tell them I can't bring myself to tell that you can learn to live with anything. 